thanks for uh, joining everyone. Uh, hi, Prachi. Thanks for your valuable time. Prachi heads our cancer vertical. And we've got a time today to talk about a very, very simple yet important topic on how to store fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Because all of us, including myself, many times, we just buy these things and we store them the wrong way. And what happens is sometimes, you know, when you, we have walnuts which are stored outside and they become oxidized, we just think, okay, they become a little bit soft, but we don't understand that that can lead to more free radicals in the body and more inflammation. So even though it's natural, what happens is it has to be stored the right way. So we all assume that dry fruit should be stored outside because it's dry and it doesn't need to be refrigerated. The same thing with certain vegetables and even fruits, they can lose their nutritional value if they are not stored the right way. Examples, things like green peas. Green peas, actually frozen green peas, have more nutritional value than the fresh green peas. And that's because the moment the, pre, the frozen green peas, the moment they're grown, they're immediately taken and frozen and put into bags and sold. Okay, that's not the best thing. It's not a fresh food, but it holds more nutrition than fresh peas, which are then harvested, put on a truck, sent to the market. By the time it reaches you, it's lost a lot of its nutritional value. So Prachi, over to you. Let's start off with fruits because there are many kinds of fruits. And what would your advice be on storing fruits, especially for people who want to. Ideally, we would like to live in a world where we get our fruits delivered to us, we eat it the same day or the second day, and then that's about it. You know, we don't have to. But given the time of COVID and lockdown and, uh, you know, many, many states, people have to travel to buy their food and come back. So that's why we have a refrigerator to store it. Prachi, over to you, please. Thank you, Lou. So, uh, you know, when it comes to fruits and vegetables as well, generally there are two ways uh, in which they kind of, you know, store it. So either it's uh, they wash it first and then dry it and then refrigerate it. While there are uh, certain times when, you know, they just put it in the refrigerator and uh, whenever, as and when required, they uh, wash it. Uh, so whichever way it works, so basically, you know, it mainly depends on the source uh, through which, you know, it comes, like be it your fruit or vegetable. So if the source is organic and it's pretty clean, then you need not really wash them before refrigerating because, uh, you know, by washing, uh, you are increasing the moisture content as well of these fruits and vegetables, which again can uh, lead to, uh, you know, more like uh, uh, faster spoilage of it. So that's the main thing. And secondly, um, you know, when it comes to uh, fruits and vegetables, there's other thing which is, uh, ethylene gas producers. So, you know, there are certain fruits and vegetables like say apples or ripe bananas or uh, broccoli and stuff, which are ethylene producers, uh, which means that, you know, they help in ripening or faster ripening of these fruits and vegetables. So uh, if you keep uh, other producers which are ethylene sensitive, then, you know, that, that leads to uh, increased or uh, rapid uh, ripening of these fruits and vegetables. So always see to it that, you know, you keep these ethylene uh, producers um, separate from the ethylene uh, sensitive fruits and vegetables. So that's the main thing. Uh, coming to fruits, so you know maybe we can divide it into two separate um, groups. Uh, one wherein uh, you require uh, you know quick refrig refrigeration as as soon as you get them, you are supposed to refrigerate them. So things like uh, you know apples or your berries or grapes, they need to be refrigerated as soon as you get them. So maybe you can keep them in like a you know, cloth storage bag and stuff. Uh, whereas there are other uh, you know, fruits like say your avocados or guava or kiwi, mangoes, which first they need to ripen in, at room temperature and then you, uh, you, know, you can refrigerate it. So you can broadly divide you know, your fruits in, in these two categories. Okay, great. So we made a chart for this. Prachi's actually taken the time to make a nice chart of all the different fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds on how to store them. So Tina will be sending that chart to all of y'all as well. Let's move on to nuts and seeds. We covered fruits and vegetables. So yes, there are certain fruits. A lot of people freeze bananas as well. And a lot of people say, are there any health benefits out of that? No. So people usually like frozen banana with ice cream and that's why they freeze it. Or they use it, you know, in their smoothies and their shakes. But other than that, like Prachi rightly said, there are certain fruits that will start ripening outside. So they have to be outside in order to ripen. They will not ripen in the fridge. The moment you put them in the fridge, they will, they will not ripen anymore. So we'll be sending you a list of, you know, each of those fruits and vegetables. What about nuts and seeds, Prachi? Because uh, a lot yes. of people store nuts out. When you go to a general grocer to buy nuts, it's anyway stored outside. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is very confusing. So could you explain that to us, please? Yes. 
so uh, when it comes to nuts and seeds basically they are high on unsaturated fats right so uh, of course these are good quality fats but uh, when you store it outside uh, in like warm temperatures uh, then you know there are there are chances that the fat will turn rancid quite quickly uh, so when we say rancidity it means that you know the the lipids or the fats in them tend to get oxidized uh, which leads to you know uh, formation of free radicals and thus which can lead to inflammation so the uh, very fact that you know we have nuts and seeds to reduce inflammation body so that the, that whole thing is lost if you are keeping uh, your nuts and seeds outside which may turn rancid quite fast so it's always good to uh, store these nuts and seeds in airtight containers so it could be you know your glass mason jars as well and uh, refri- refrigerate them so and also uh, you know rather than um, buying them in bulk it's always good to have uh, you know in smaller quantity so maybe in smaller batches which would last for say about a few weeks is much better than uh, you know buying them in bulk so yeah always refrigerate them in airtight containers okay great are there any other points prachi that you would want to give us specifically about any groups of food what about pulses what about pulses and grains exactly. you know how do we store that because in in traditional india people would store rice under the beds you know in right. dark very dark areas so can you tell us about rices you know pulses and everything yeah. yeah so when it comes to say whole grains or whole pulses as well so basically again uh, if you look at the structure there is the bran then there's germ and there's uh, endosperm so again the germ part has a more has more of fat content in it but which again uh, you know the same rule applies that if if uh, it's kept at a very warm temperature then that can cause rancidity as well uh, so always you know see to it that you uh, pack them in airtight container so maybe a steel container or a glass container but see to it that they are kept in cool and dry and dark places you know at of course the room temperature is fine uh but again uh, you know uh, it's always good to buy them in smaller quantities and maybe uh, you know allow them to be uh, uh, there for like maybe a month or two but uh, we do understand you know that there are certain uh, grains and pulses which we we may not use on a frequent basis so maybe just once a month or so so at such time what you can still do is you can uh, refrigerate them but in the fr- uh, fridge not really in the freezer per se and then remove it out whenever you know you really need it uh, bring it back to room temperature and then use it uh, also in terms of avoiding infestations yes uh, you know so they do tend to uh, keep say cloves or dried neem leaves or even bay leaves in the whole grain um, you know the the containers to help uh, uh, avoid any infestation per se right and also prachi to play a lot of the pulses grains dals all of that they come in these ziploc bags you know where you cut it in the ziploc over there do you suggest that you transfer all the contents of it into like glass jars and containers or is it okay to keep it in a ziploc bag it's better that you you know you transfer it to a steel or a glass container because again the ziploc bags are plastic so you know again as we talk about the no estrogens and stuff so it's always better to you know transfer them in either steel or uh, glass containers mason jars are really good for that as well okay what about spices are there any spices that need to be stored in the fridge or is it safe to keep spices like you know uh, clove uh, cinnamon bay leaves all of that stuff can that be kept up or that need to be stored in the fridge uh, again you know if they you are supposed to use it uh, on a daily basis and you are going to consume it uh, in another like say two or three months it's always good to keep at room temperature but if at all you are going to use it say just you know not that frequently it is still fine to keep it uh, in the fridge like in an airtight container but it's it's better to keep it you know at room temperature Okay fantastic i think you've answered all our questions prachi is there anything else that you would like to leave the listeners with in regards to storage or any other tips uh so you know uh, as a gist of it you know so it's always good to uh, know your fruits and vegetables because it's not like a thumb rule or one rule for all veggies and fruits as we discussed so it's always good to know which ones would go in the fridge which ones would stay outside and you know they uh, for the ripening process to happen uh, in a better way uh so you know it's always good to be aware of these things which will help in you know further uh 
preventing any nutritional losses as well and which will help so the help or entire purpose of having these fresh fru fruits vegetables nuts seeds is to help with our, um, you know our health further and to also you know build our immunity and stuff so it's always it's also good to know the right way to uh, store them so we can reap the uh, you know the maximum benefits out of it perfect thanks prachi so much so i think in end if we are able to live local and just buy you know whatever we need for the day that would be yeah. ideal because then we don't get confused with storage so much and at the same time uh, when we consume local vegetables and fruits they last longer because you know the whole ripening process everything it comes to your place you can keep it even out of the fridge because you know that you will use it over the next 2 to 2 to 3 days it becomes yeah. tricky when you're getting imported fruits and imported vegetables and all of that stuff because it's already been on a ship or it's been refrigerated for so long so always try to choose local first and i like what prachi said about let's not over store stuff like if we need nuts seeds you know we shouldn't buy like kilos of it use it if we know like we you know we need a certain amount for a month that's about it and then restock and restock so that storage doesn't always become a problem prachi thank you so much for your valuable time and thank you everyone for joining us have a great weekend